Hello, my name is Dr. Craig Rogers. I'm the Director of Renal Surgery at Henry Ford Hospital and the Director of Urologic Oncology uh, at Henry Ford Hospital. I'm going to be talking to you today about complex um, kidney cancer surgery, especially using robotic technology for a minimally invasive approach. So first, why do a partial nephrectomy? Um, the uh, data is um, very solid from our own organizations in the United States and in Europe supporting um, guidelines of a partial nephrectomy whenever possible for kidney cancer. Um, this is now the standard treatment for small renal masses and the data shows that renal function is better preserved when a kidney sparing approach is used. And it's, there's also evidence for improved morbidity and even survival with a partial nephrectomy. So, why do I do it? Well, um, I do a minimally invasive robotic approach whenever I do kidney surgery because I feel that it is an enabler. It allows me to do more complex surgeries and it allows me to do it better. Um, also, uh, data that we've shown in publication have demonstrated improved outcomes, both of reduced ischemia time to the kidney, reduced blood loss, and reduced hospital stay. And I found that this, and I'll show this in my talk today, that this has facilitated progression to more and more challenging cases. This is a, a picture from a publication that we did here at Henry Ford that looked at trends in kidney surgery throughout the, the nation using a database called the Nationwide Inpatient Sample. And what it showed here, um, as you see this uptake in robotic partial nephrectomy um, here in purple, that since we were recording the use of robotic partial nephrectomy in 2009, there has been a dramatic 40% increase uh, in robotic partial nephrectomy, far surpassing the what used to be the main minimally invasive approach of laparoscopic partial nephrectomy. Now that ended in 2010. In the last five years, it has now gone on at that same pace to overpass the open partial nephrectomy. So the most common surgery now for kidney cancer, for small renal masses, is the robotic partial nephrectomy procedure which was innovated here at Henry Ford Hospital. So um, what this has done now is not only is it the main way of doing, uh, not only is robotic partial nephrectomy the main way of doing this surgery, it is now, there are now reports of increasingly complex surgeries being done that ordinarily would have had to be been done through an open approach or removing the entire kidney. So for example, three publications that I was involved with here is the first publication looking at robotic partial nephrectomy for complex tumors. And then uh, other studies I was involved in looking at robotic partial nephrectomy for tumors that were involving the main vessels to the kidney, which normally would involve removal of the kidney. And uh, on the bottom of a study that we were involved in looking at robotic partial nephrectomy for large tumors that ordinarily would have required removal of the kidney. So this is these are just examples of the feasibility of using the robotic platform to do harder and harder cases. So this is a busy slide, but I'm going to show these tips in video format. These are just guidelines that I give, uh, that I try to teach others about how to do more complex surgeries and how to approach it. Some kind of general guidelines in this first bullet point, the idea of exposure. You always want to set up a tumor so that it is, um, so that I'll say the tumor looks you in the eye because not all tumors are right in front of you. It may be on the back side of the kidney, the top, the bottom. So a lot of the surgery involves just setup of getting that kidney rotated so the tumor is in the optimal position for success. I'll talk about checklists of what instruments and equipment you need to do the surgery well. I'll talk about ultrasound and the use of ultrasound to help find the tumor. I'll talk about what to do when the tumor is embedded deep in the kidney as opposed to hanging off the kidney. Uh, then I'll talk about what to do when the tumors are involving the major blood vessels. What do you do when, there are more than, when there's more than one tumor or the patient has poor kidney function where you have to minimize the amount of time that the blood vessels are clamped to the kidney. And then we'll talk about um, larger tumors. What to do when there's, the stakes are higher with a tumor that might burst if it's fluid filled or you just have to minimize the manipulation of that tumor. 
This is, shows about how to put in the ports if you're doing a robotic partial nephrectomy. Now I've intentionally showed more ports than I would normally put in and, and the idea here is that as tumors get more and more complex, you may put more ports in to help guarantee success. So um, the ports in blue are assistant ports and the ports in green are robotic ports. So usually there's a primary port near the umbilicus and then there's the robotic port for the camera, the robotic instruments. The optional ports you can use are the fourth arm port, which is near the uh, anterior superior iliac spine or the hip of the patient. Uh, on the right side, we'll put a port in, in the subxiphoid position to allow liver retraction. And then if it was a very complex surgery, we might even put a second assistant port in. Here are some examples of some more complex tumors that can be done with the robotic approach. So you see here a uh, completely endophytic tumor. Um, here's a tumor that's abutting the major blood supply to the kidney. Uh, here's a T1B or a tumor that's over four centimeters. And uh, again, here's kind of a combination of both a large tumor and a, uh, the tumor is also abutting the renal vessels. So these are all t tumors where surgeons might look at this and say, well, we're gonna have to take this whole kidney out. I don't feel that we lose anything by telling that patient, we're gonna approach this with an open mind and see if it can be done. And many times with the robotic approach, we're, we find that we can do these cases and do them well. Um, this is an exam a video example of a patient with two tumors. So this shows the need for efficiency to get two tumors out in the same amount of time that we would clamp the blood vessels. So what I'm showing is the fourth arm lifting the kidney up. The, the blood vessels have just been exposed. This is using intraoperative ultrasound to expose the tumor. Now this video clip goes very fast, but I'm gonna break it down into shorter steps later on. Now we're gonna use the robotic instrument to place the clamp on the renal artery, cut out both tumors, and then sew the kidney back together again so right now we're on clamp, so time is of the essence. We have to work efficiently. We're sewing the deep inner layer of the kidney. And uh, then after sewing the inner layer on both tumors, so we just sewed the lower defect, now sewing the upper defect, the robotic approach makes these mo movements much more efficient. Um, now after sewing the inner layer of the kidney, sewing the outer or capsular layer, this is using the sliding clip technique to completely close the defect. Notice I'm sewing with my left hand. That would be very difficult laparoscopically, but very easy with the robotic approach. Um, putting the clips on the sutures, sliding them down, and then taking off the clamp off the renal vessel. So after that, additional sutures can be placed off clamp. That minimizes the clamp time on the kidney. These outer capsular sutures are made of vicryl. The inner layer sutures are monocryl sutures. All these video clips are um, on YouTube. They're, um, I put them on our website and they can be seen for more study. Um, so this is a case of another patient with two tumors and these tumors were large and they were deep in the kidney. So kind of a combination of all that, everything challenging in one. Um, so this, I'm gonna go right to the part where we excise the tumor. So this is placing the robotic bulldog clamp on both the artery and the vein. Normally I would just clamp the artery, but these tumors are so deep, we're gonna clamp the vein as well to try to minimize the blood loss and improve exposure. Um, so then I've already marked out the tumor with ultrasound and we're just slowly, methodically, circumferentially cutting around the, um, the tumor. So the tumor is below, um, cutting through the cortex of the kidney to the medulla, not getting in a hole, trying to go circumferential so we get wide exposure, and using a combination of sharp cutting, sharp dissection, and blunt dissection. So the robot allows you to sort of peel the tumor off the tissue. Um, so just slow, methodical. Notice the assistant also is very important here. The assistant with the suction hangs right at the lip of the defect to improve exposure but also to give counter traction. So what we're seeing here is tumor number one and tumor number two. These tumors are next to one another and right now I'm trying to make the decision are we going to cut them out together as one unit? Are we going to cut them out uh, all in one? Um, this is 
the collecting system of the kidney, what we're seeing right here. So I'm trying to preserve the collecting system. I'm gonna to have to sew that shut when I'm all done. But for right now, it's just get the tumors out, then assess what blood vessels and collecting system defects there are uh, that have to be sewn. And um, I'm providing counter traction on this tumor, but you have to be careful not to use too much traction where it could pop or disrupt that tumor. This is a clip that's being put in on a, a collect, both collecting system and blood vessels. If I see an obvious blood vessel, rather than just cut through it and hope to find it later to sew it, uh, we'll go ahead and put a clip on. Now I don't want those clips to erode into the kidney later, so what I'll do is when it comes time to sew, we can under sew those clips to exclude them from the collecting system. And uh, uh, so after the rest of the collecting system, now I've come back to that decision of do you cut both tumors out together or separately. I decided to cut them out separately here to get better exposure. So one tumor is out and then the second tumor is being cut out. Notice I'm lifting with my uh, other hand to provide traction that better exposes the tumor. Um, and both tumors are now laid aside and we'll sew the kidney back together. So this is the sutured reconstruction, doing an inner layer suture. This, is, um, this suture is called barb suture. It's a V-lock suture. And the reason we use this is it's more efficient. The, uh, when you pull the suture through, it has little barbs that keep the suture in place. So you can sew faster, more efficiently. This is sewing the collecting system right here. So you see an opening in the collecting system. And, uh, you know, we used to do techniques such as put a catheter up and inject dye and blue to find these openings. With the magnified robotic approach, I don't need those to do those extra steps. I can see the defect clearly, sew it efficiently and precisely. Um, so then after sewing the collecting system defects, the blood vessels, then we'll come out with that inner layer suture. Clips go on the outside of the kidney, cinch them down, and uh, then we'll move forward to sewing the outer layer of the kidney. So now it's renal capsule to renal capsule on the other side. And notice the defect just completely closes together, sort of sandwiches shut. Um, you'll see that with this example well. When it comes out, the clip goes on the suture. Notice it cinches down and this defect's going to completely close. Gone. So you just do that the whole way up until the defect is completely closed and then we'll come off clamp at that point. We could come off clamp earlier if we really needed to, so now the kidney is perfused and the defect is closed. So um, to summarize some of these techniques to minimize the ischemia time during partial nephrectomy, because we want to minimize any damage to the kidney from lack of blood flow, a lot of this comes from efficiency. So if you just prepare ahead, have the right equipment, the right exposure, that will save time. Um, I'll talk about on-demand ischemia. That's where you start to cut the tumor out until it bleeds and then you clamp. There's what's called early unclamping where you just sew what you absolutely need to but don't sew everything, come off clamp and then sew the rest off clamp. There's selective clamping. That's where you find little branches of vessels just heading to the tumor and only clamp those vessels, leave the rest of the kidney unclamped. There's complete off clamp where you just cut it out and deal with the bleeding as you go using sutures afterwards. And then a technique that we've developed here at Henry Ford called intracorporeal hypothermia. That's called cooling the kidney using ice slush, putting it around the kidney to cool it while the kidney's clamped to protect the kidney. We have developed a technique here to cool the kidney even through a minimally invasive approach. And there's techniques of resection that spare more nephrons or kidney tissue called enucleation or a nucleo resection. So um, I talked about the timeout, uh, having a, an equipment, a checklist to go through to, um, for efficiency and to make sure you have everything. So this is my checklist, which I uh, go through before every case, right before we clamp the blood vessels. It's almost like a timeout in surgery. So we make sure we have the sutures, the equipment, the, the amount of carbon dioxide gas, that we have the right, the needle drivers have all been checked, that we don't need any replacements, that they're cleaned. We don't want to do any of these things during clamp. Um, 
So this is a video that's going to show kind of all those techniques of preserving renal function in one case. This patient has three tumors in a solitary kidney. So he had already had an open nephrectomy, did not want another open surgery. He also has multiple blood vessels. You're going to see vessel one, two, three, four, so multiple vessels. Um, I'm using this ultrasound probe, which we helped develop here at Henry Ford Hospital. And uh, this is marking out all three tumors. Now I'm starting to cut the tumor out, but I haven't clamped yet. So this is on-demand ischemia. My intent is to start cutting until I begin to lose visualization. Once I do, I'm going to put a clamp just on the vessel that goes to that tumor. That's called selective ischemia or selective clamping. Now I cut one tumor out, I'm going to the next tumor. So I'm going to just clamp the vessel going to that tumor. I'm going to clamp, uh, cut this out using the same techniques described before, sharp and blunt dissection lay aside the tumor. Now I'm just going to sew the inner layer of each defect. I'm not going to put all the sutures in like we showed before. So after just sewing one running sort of baseball stitch layer in each of the three defects, now we're going to come off clamp. So there are still blood vessels that haven't been sewn, so it's going to be a little bit oozy here intentionally. Um, and then I'll sew those blood vessels shut, um, but the kidney's fully perfused now. And at the end, we can put some hemostatic agents in, put the tumors in a bag, and this is the patient's belly when we're all done. So this normally would have been a foot and a half long incision through an open approach. This patient did very well uh, with a minimally invasive approach. Here's an example of a hyalur tumor. So this tumor is abutting critical structures of the kidney, and we're just peeling this tumor out along its pseudocapsule. This is a patient that had a tumor deep in the heart of the kidney, this would have been a nephrectomy, but what we were able to do is use enucleation to peel that tumor away from the major blood vessels. So first part is just finding the tumor. So going in between the artery and vein, there's the tumor deep in the heart of the kidney, and then cutting that tumor out using an enucleoresection approach. We would not have the angles to cut this out using any other technique, such as laparoscopy. This would have been a nephrectomy, but we were able to save his kidney and cure his cancer. So some of the tools that the robot provides that, that enhance our ability to do complex surgeries, one is called fluorescent imaging, and I'll show a video of this later where you can light up the blood supply to the kidney tumors. Uh, the robotic ultrasound, which we help develop here, that allows the surgeon to control the ultrasound used to locate the tumors. And then robotic bulldog clamps. Also, we've helped um, develop these here at Henry Ford Hospital. This allows the surgeon to, put the, to completely control the clamping of the kidney. So let's talk about the Firefly technology. So this is a technology that uses um, laser fluorescence imaging. Um, so um, endocyanine green is injected by the anesthesiologist that goes through the bloodstream to the kidney. A laser from the robot then is used to excite that ICG so it fluoresces and that's detected through the um, console of the robot. So the surgeon sees green where there's blood supply. Um, we'll show an example of that. Here's normal arteries then they turn green on uh, what we call firefly mode almost like a firefly lighting up. Um, here's an example of selective clamping where I'm going to um, first use an ultrasound or a, a Doppler device to locate vessels. Now I'm using the robotic ultrasound to locate the tumor. I'm just clamping the vessel that I think goes to that tumor. We've given the ICG um, and what, what you're going to notice is the tumors here but there's still some green over the tumor. So what that tells me is that in this particular case, just clamping that little branch to what I thought was the tumor isn't a good idea because it actually gets blood supply from other vessels as well. So this tells me that I'm better off to go do routine clamping of some of the main branches rather than selecting clamping of this branch. But if I didn't have the ICG, I would have found out when I started to cut the tumor out and it bled more than I wanted it to. So this technology helped me in this case. How, um, on the other hand, if the tumor would have been dark when I gave ICG, then that would confirm there's no blood flow and that I can safely do the selective clamping. So then the other technique was the off clamp, no clamping at all, uh, also called zero ischemia clamping or, or zero ischemia technique. 
And this has been described and has now been actually published in hundreds of cases. What, um, what this involves is identifying super selected branches to the tumor, only clamping those branches so there's no clamping to the normal um, kidney um, parenchyma. So we've also published about um, partial nephrectomy for solitary kidneys. So these, the stakes are very high. There's no room for error when there's only one kidney or these patients would end up on dialysis. Traditionally, these were done through an open approach, cooling the kidney with ice, but we've shown feasibility of using robotic approach even in the most complex of cases. Um, one way of doing that is the technique of cooling the kidney. So when I used to do open partial nephrectomy, big open incision, we would take ice and pack the kidney in ice to help protect it. And it was very difficult to replicate that through a minimally invasive approach. Well, we've described the ability to do that. Now, these two papers describe why you would want to do that. So these are two papers that both showed a protective effect of cooling the kidney um, to protect renal function. So using that you know, evidence of why we should do it, now the question is how to do it. So we published a technique for how to do that. Uh, this was uh, published in European Urology. What we used was a special port, and I'm going to show this later in talks, called a gel point. The gel point is essentially making the same incision you'd make at the end of the surgery to get the tumor out, but then you cover it with a special gel, pour, uh, a gel device that makes it easier to put things in and to take things out without losing the um, carbon dioxide insufflation. So in this case, what we put in was ice through a special syringe that we developed here, and we removed the kidney. Um, instead of waiting till the end of the surgery, we just put the tumor in a bag and removed it while we were still doing the surgery. That allowed this, the pathologist to assess the tumor and tell us whether we got everything out while I was sewing the kidney back together. Um, this is an example of different ways to cool the kidney. So I'm clamping the blood supply and I'm um, irrigating the kidney with supercooled saline and we have a second robotic controlled suction to collect that saline so it doesn't pool up in the patient to cool the body temperature. So this is one easy technique. We just spray the kidney with cold water. Um, then I'll show another technique where we put ice slush around the kidney using a, a syringe. This is a sigmoidoscope actually, but we've developed a, an even longer syringe at the Henry Ford in Innovation Institute for this. So the kidney's clamped all during this time, but the kidney is cooled, and we have confirmed um, adequate cooling using temperature probes showing reliable, um, consistent cooling less than 15 degrees. Um, this is the, uh, the plunger that we developed um, to make this process even easier. Uh, this is filling the plunger with ice slush ahead of time. We have multiple plungers. Um, in this particular example, what we're going to do is clamp the artery and vein because you need to completely cool the kidney. So you shut it down with complete clamping. This is the syringe going through the gel point, pushing the ice around the kidney. And in this case, um, we're actually opening the kidney for an anatrophic nephrolithotomy. So we're removing a stone, but it's a great example of core temperatures less than 10 degrees. Um, so we're actually able to put the probe in the kidney, not just put it in the ice. So these are, you know, these are great techniques that help me to do a better job on these complex cases. So the other innovation has been the equipment. There's been an upgrade on the robot from the SI system to the XI system. We have that here at Henry Ford Hospital. Um, and uh, I'm gonna give a demonstration of some of the differences with the new robot. One difference is the ports. So I showed you an example of the port placement before. With the XI robot, it isn't quite as critical to have the ports spaced widely apart. Often we'll go almost in a straight line with the robotic ports. It's less critical, critical as to what angle you come in to dock the robot. Um, because the, the XI robot, and I'll show you the technology, has a boom that can swivel around and come in at different angles. So this is the XI robot here. Um, some differences with the SI robot, narrower arms with a longer reach, fewer collisions. Um, you can, it has a laser that can target from any position, head to feet, uh, so the angle of docking is less critical. 
Um, the camera is a smaller camera, it's eight millimeters that allows it to go through a robotic trocar. So you can actually move the camera from port to port to get the optimal angle. And it the camera gives you a wider field of view. It's closer to the tissue and it can auto focus. So you're spending less time hitting the focusing pedal. It just does it for you. Um, so this is a patient. I'm going to demonstrate a video of a robotic partial nephrectomy using the XI robot. Um, this patient has a large tumor, um, very com uh, complex tumor. So back to our basic principles. First thing is just exposure. Expose the tumor. So I'm opening the fat around the kidney to just try to get to the tumor. Uh, ultrasound is going to be very helpful here as we get closer to the tumor to delineate the borders of the tumor. Um, so we're coming around here, getting the fat off the kidney. We're starting to see the tumor under the fat. So I'll remove the fat. If there's fat that's in the way, I'll remove that, send it to pathology so we can still assess for staging that the tumor doesn't invade into the fat. But then it gets it out of my way so it doesn't obscure the field of view. Um, so removing more of the fat to get to the tumor. And then we'll show the ultrasound coming in. It's very important to get the back side. This may be a more tedious step of getting the fat off the back side of the tumor, but it pays dividends in the end. If you take that little extra time to get it exposed, it makes it easier to sew. Here again is this um, ultrasound probe, the Hitachi Aloka ultrasound probe that I can control robotically. You can see that tumor in the picture on picture image below. So as I go back, there's tumor right there. It's a cystic tumor. So it shows up very well on ultrasound. Notice externally, I really have no idea where the tumor is. It's just a bunch of fat. But below, clear as day, tumor on top. And what I'll do is go from the tumor to the no, no tumor area, mark it with cautery. So without that ultrasound, I'm sort of you know lost. Uh, but with the ultrasound, it's like a pilot flying through clouds by instruments. I have instruments to get me where I need to go. Um, so now what I'm going to do is clamp the blood supply to cut the tumor out, and I'm going to show once again that ICG or the Firefly technology to um, light up the blood supply. So I'm setting up, I'm getting the robotic bulldogs, and I'm going to robotically place that clamp on the renal artery that's already been exposed. So the renal artery now is clamped. So we're going to shut that. Now the ICG is given and we're going to go into the firefly mode, which is kind of a black and white. It looks black and white mode, but anything that's perfused or has blood flow is going to show up green. And what I'm going to do is go, um, we're going to look at the tumor area. The tumor is dark, so that just shows that shutting down the main renal artery adequately gave us perfusion. Because what if we missed a vessel, maybe a, an accessory vessel near the adrenal, then if that tumor lit up, then I know we have a problem. We go back and we clamp more of the kidney. Um, now is gonna, uh, we're going to show excising the tumor. So the fourth arm was actually lifting the tumor up out of the way to give better exposure. Um, same principles of going wide along the defect. This defect has already been completely marked by ultrasound, so I know where to cut. And. Uh, once I get a little deeper, then the suction, my assistant with the suction can go over the lip, retract the lip, and suck to expose where I need to cut. And we'll keep cutting this out until we start to get under the base of the tumor. As I approach vessels, um, then we'll cl uh, clip these vessels off. So we're going to approach a vessel right in here, and I'm starting to think that we're going to put a clip on this. I'm, giving my assistant some signals to have the clip ready. And I'm setting this up so the clip can come in. Usually these are just small wet clips put at the base. So it's one, it's controlling the vessel. Two, it's a marker so I know where to sew later on. And we'll keep doing that on these major vessels to the base of the tumor. I'm not a big fan of leaving a lot of clips in the defect, but um, these clips can be removed afterwards if you're worried about erosion into the collecting system. But I think they make a great marker. They speed up the uh, excision time and the clamp time. So we'll continue this the whole way around to remove the tumor 
and then sew it back up. So there's the tumor just starting to come into view right here. So this tells me I'm close to the capsule, the pseudo capsule of the tumor. I'm going to course correct, go a little bit wider to go under this tumor. So there's the course correction, leaving a little bit of parenchyma right on the tumor here, uh, just so we're less likely to violate that tumor. We want a good cancer control with the surgery, then coming around the sides, working our way into the middle. Um, notice the left hand. I'm not grabbing the tumor. It's just blunt upward lift, being careful not to pop or poke into the tumor. Uh, the fourth arm can adjust, move back and forth, rock side to side, and uh, this tumor is almost out. This is the part where you have to be careful not to put too much traction on the tumor. And now the tumor's out, we'll lay it off to the side while we sew up the kidney. Um, and then for the suturing, you could sew this with what, just one needle driver if you want for efficiency and to save money. For the more complex cases, I will usually switch to a second needle driver. So that's what I've done here. My left hand has a second needle driver. And I can see those little vessels that I had, um, um, where I had gone through and excised in the tumor. And now I can just run um, my suture across those vessels and the defect. So um, another, uh, another technique that we've used here and that's been very helpful for these tumors that are at the hardest to reach locations, that's the back side of the kidney. So when you have a tumor down here that's hanging off the posterior aspect of the kidney, that often requires flipping the kidney, twisting the kidney, torquing the kidney just to get that tumor in view. A retroperitoneal approach allows the surgeon direct access through the back uh, of the patient instead of going through the front. So you have direct access to the blood supply, direct access to the tumor. Um, so there's no bowel mobilization, no flipping, twisting. Now the, what may be challenging for some surgeons here is it's a smaller working space. So the surgeon has to be used to working in a tight, confined space, but that's where the robot shines. It's really good at working in tight, confined spaces. Um, so the technique, I'll go through this in picture and video, but it involves um, uh, making an incision for the camera right above the iliac crest, balloon dilation of the space, um, a special balloon port for the camera, and uh, docking the robot over the patient's head. Although if we use the XI robot, which I just showed, it doesn't matter, you don't have to come over the head of the patient anymore. So this is a video that we made on a step-by-step -step approach for robotic partial nephrectomy through a retroperitoneal approach. And um, <clears throat> so there's a little bit of intro to this, but we'll go, we'll go into the positioning. This is a case where the patient is in full flank position. You want everything 90 degrees, middle of the table. This is a left-sided partial nephrectomy. Um, the table is flexed to open up this space between the rib and the hip. Um, the arms are secured to the side. So we get everything right in terms of positioning, maximize the space that the robot can go. Once the patient is secured to the table, this is an SI robot case, so we're gonna turn the whole table so the robot can dock over the head of the patient. So you have to let anesthesia know that you're doing this so they can prepare their anesthesia card and tubing appropriately to allow the robot to move into that space where normally they are. Uh, so they'll move to the side, the robot will dock over the head. Now the first part of this is essentially a laparoscopic approach. There's going to be an incision made um, at the iliac crest below the twelfth rib. You'll feel a soft indentation there where it needs to go. We call this the triangle of petite or petite's triangle where the latissimus dorsi and the um, external oblique muscle fibers uh, kind of separate there. And um, so then uh, I'm planning out in my head where the ports are going to go, but I'm going to make that incision for the camera trocar, extend that down to the, uh, to the fascia using a Kelly clamp to go through the lumbar lumbodorsal fascia. And you can use finger dissection here to kind of develop that space, confirm that you're in the right space. So we are outside the peritoneum now. We're going to use this balloon trocar 
this balloon dilator, I'm sorry, to dilate the retroperitoneal space. So the balloon dilator goes in and uh, the letters will face you. Through a Seldinger technique, the inner obturator comes out, the balloon slides in. And then we'll use the, um, I'm going to do this under vision just to show what's happening on the inside. So in this upper corner, you can see the retroperitoneal space expanding with the balloon as the balloon is inflated. I'll usually inflate it at least to 30 or 40 pumps. You can see, you could just see the ureter in there briefly. So you can actually see muscle, ureter, to know you're in the right space. So then the dilating balloon comes out. A camera port goes in with a balloon to keep it in place. Now I'm going to go in with the laparoscopic um, uh, camera and just make sure I have a, enough room uh, for my other ports. So the first port is going to go posteriorly near the junction of the 12th rib and the um, paraspinous muscles. So this is the robotic trocar coming in. And then we'll do the medial trocars. So this is the um, anterior axillary line of the patient putting both robotic trocars in. They're showing an internal view. The peritoneum is what I'm touching there with the suction to kind of keep the peritoneum out of the way. The two trocars come in and once, and then we'll place an assistant port as well. Now we're ready to dock. So this is the part where the robot's gonna come in over the head of the patient, directly in line with the spine of the patient. Um, we'll dock dock the camera, the robotic arms. So at the very beginning of the surgery, there may be more collisions because everything is in a tighter space. So the surgeon has to be aware of those collisions, work with smaller motions, not big motions. So now it's just a, now we're docked, we're doing the robotic portion. I'm removing some fat around the kidney just to get it out of the way. Now I'm opening what we call opening the bag, opening Gerota's fascia, that's the sac of fascia around the kidney. Once that bag is open, we can start to see, uh, we're gonna begin to see the blood vessels. So there's the artery, there's the vein. So we have renal artery, renal vein exposed within about 15 minutes. Um, so it's immediate direct exposure to the blood supply. Then once the tumor's taken out, it's just removed from that assistant port. So, um, We've, uh, we've published results of using the retroperitoneal approach for these posterior tumors and prior surgeries. We were one of five high volume academic centers and we showed that after demonstrating and, and uh, publishing on this uh, approach that the approach has increased. We've done it now for, from 10% to up to 40% of cases. Um, we were able to use this approach for patients with complex prior abdominal surgery with a lot of scar tissue that normally would have been a higher risk approach, but now we could avoid all that scar tissue altogether by going through the back. Um, so this has been a big use, a uh, big help for us for the right patient who needs it. So in conclusion, in expanding indications of robotic partial nephrectomy, nephrectomy to more complex cases, the robot itself is one game changer to make these cases more possible. Um, the robotics enables progression to more challenging cases. Um, these new technologies that I talked about, ultrasound, firefly, robotic bulldogs, all of these provide additional improvements for the surgeon and allows us to emulate all those advantages of the open approach, but without the big incision. Um, so offering patients an earlier discharge, less pain, less bleeding, and the surgeon better equipment for doing the right partial nephrectomy surgery for these patients. Um, thank you very much. These are some resources where these videos can be found at, and uh, I appreciate your attention.